Now, if you've been following level one lately, and the craziness that I've been up to, you'll know that I've gone a little bit keyboard mad. It started with the Model F restoration. The Model F. This keyboard, okay, the layout's not very modern. It's starting to resemble a modern keyboard. I've only got 10 function keys instead of 12. It's the IBM Model F from the 1980s. It has big mechanical spring flippers. Kind of like these, but even a little bit bigger than these. These flippers are actually from a Model M, which came after the F. This is a 2021 version of the Model M from a company called Unicomp. It's basically a modern layout. Okay, they cut the numeric keypad off. It's called the SSK. They call it the Mini M, but it's a very similar mechanical buckling spring keyboard that also dates from the 80s. This is the later 80s, but these were manufactured, well, through the 2000s and even till today. It's a very distinctive mechanical feel. Provides very good tactile feedback. It's easy to type on these for hours and hours and hours without fatiguing. So, it turns out that it's a little tricky to get those keyboards working on modern systems. I've gone crazy building new controllers for old keyboards, like the Model F in the restoration video. It's like, hey, let's put it together. To be sure that's not my work alone. But I have recently joined a team that's basically the A team of old keyboard restoration. And we're getting it to where you can run QMK, quantum mechanical keyboard, on the old Model M's. But I decided to take a look around at what else there is. This is the System76 launch keyboard. And that's probably what brought you here because that's probably what I put in the thumbnail. But you know, this is level one. I want you to have a background because I love the Model M. The Model M is my keyboard. The only thing that's maybe even a little bit better than the Model M Beam Spring. That dates from the 1970s. So it's like Beam Spring Model F, Model M. But System 76, Colorado, the Linux folks, this is exactly how this arrived. I actually bought this. And so this is how it shipped. Uh, the box is super mangled, but I kind of like that for the environment because, hey, we don't have any extra packaging, unlike Amazon, where when you ship, you know, they'll, <laughs> you order a micro SD card and they ship it in a 12 by 12 box with one, you know, thing. This is pretty good, I guess, because I can, the box is not in such terrible shape that I won't save it, but there we go. Purple, so this is the quiet clicky, not mechanical clicky. I needed a keyboard that I could use on stream and while recording videos. It wasn't quite as loud as the Model M or the Model F. I mean, the Model F, they just, it reverberates. It's, it's pretty crazy. There's a bunch of reviews of the launch already, this particular keyboard, but this is gonna be my impression as somebody that, you know, comes from the Model M family. First of all, there's the introduction card, which I knew what to expect because I've watched other reviews. I actually pre-ordered this. I paid for this with my own money. It just took a long time to get here because uh, I think System76 uh, had a more popular product than they realized. Here's what's in the box. You open it, and you're presented with it. It's pretty awesome. Now we've got full function keys. It's not really super abbreviated. Like my Mini M, there's no numeric keypad, but I do have a pretty good layout and pretty good arrow keys. The keycaps, as well as the key switches, are user replaceable. I don't think a lot of reviews covered that, that you can actually not only replace the keycaps, but also the key switches. I've got a video coming up in a couple of weeks where I'm gonna put some KLH box pinks on this instead of the, the quiet purple ones. Now the purple ones, to be sure, they do respond mechanically before bottoming out, but they're very quiet. Also in the box, got a lot of extra keycaps, so you can customize it. There's really only three keycap sizes on this keyboard. Even the space bar is split. If you've been following this channel for a long time, you'll know that when I went to visit Steve at Gamers Nexus, I took along the Canon Cat, which had a really awesome feature. It was the split space bar. To be honest, that was the thing that sort of sent me over the edge for ordering this keyboard because on that keyboard, <laughs> space in next to space was basically like a previous next. And that was a pretty cool feature. It was a pretty cool, uh, you know, interface feature for the time before mice. We've got super and function and function over here. Caps lock. On my mini Model M, I remapped caps lock to be a Meta key. How do you do caps lock? Shift, shift. And I can do that with this because this keyboard runs QMK, quantum mechanical keyboard, exactly the same as my DIY keyboard controller, which is also open source. Like the work that I did, the work that System76 has done is also open source. One really unique and killer feature is that it has a 10 gigabit USB hub. 
your keyboard doesn't need to be 10 gigabit, but they went ahead and did it anyway. There's two type C and two type A ports that'll run at the full USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit. That reminds me, I'm probably gonna have to build a level one KVM that's 10 gigabit so that you can use it with this keyboard. There's a lot of little details in this keyboard that make it really nice. Like for example, the space bars, they sit just a little higher than the other keys. Makes it pretty easy to find them. Also in the box, you've got a long braided USB C to C cable, an A to C cable, a keycap and key switch puller, depending on which end you use. You pull the keycaps on this end, you pull the switches with this end. And also an extra foot, it's magnetic. So check this out. This bar gives you a 15 degree angle. It goes in place magnetically and it'll give the top of your keyboard that little bit of extra lift. Now, if it was me, I would have recessed this USB type C connection so that you basically insert the cable inside the keyboard so that it's got mechanical strain relief. As it is, if I bang on this sideways, it's just gonna snap that connector right off. But I can't really fault System76 for that. That's pretty much how everything is. One of the things I really like, System76 definitely knows their audience. So the caps lock button, they have an extra function button that's the same size as the caps lock button. They know that the caps lock key is worthless and yet it's on pretty much all modern keyboards. So yeah, caps lock. Caps lock can go away, revealing our Kalich Royal Purple or KLH Royal Purple switches. Caps to function, there we go, because remember, shift shift in QMK, at least in my configuration, is caps lock. It comes with extra colors for escape and the arrow keys, so you can do color accent. You can also order stuff because this is, you know, standard keycaps. Um, we've got space space here, but this could also be shift or backspace. There are keycaps in the box for that. Pay special attention to page up, page down, home and end. It's home, page up, page down, and end. I don't know if I like that. Maybe I want to group page up and page down together. No problem, you reprogram the keyboard. And the programming goes with the keyboard. It becomes a part of the keyboard. So when I plug it in somewhere, no problem. If you want to rearrange the keys to be another layout, this is the QWERTY layout, which is pretty standard. There's also the Dvorak layout. And everybody, we all go through the Dvorak phase. We all do, we definitely do. So you can change the layout to Dvorak, and when you plug it in, it will be the Dvorak layout without you having to do anything, no matter which computer that you're using. All right, that's enough yik yakking about System 76's launch keyboard. I can't really tell you anything that any other review wouldn't tell you, except for now I'm gonna actually try to use it and do stuff with it and see how that goes. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the launch, the System 76 launch keyboard. I think I paid like $290, a little over $300 all in shipped for this keyboard. To be sure, it's a nice keyboard. $300 is a little on the steep side, but it was put together in America and we're paying American wages, hopefully fair wages, and uh, System76 has done a good job. I think that that's probably a reasonable price given the you know, inflation, economic collapse, blah, 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 supporting an open source project. It's a little bit of a risk to you know, do the open source keyboard because you know, somebody somewhere else that's got a keyboard manufacturing facility can just download all your stuff flash it, do stuff, and be good to go. But hey, you know, support the project, it's totally okay. If you want the, the stuff that I've done is also open source. The M-Star Classic controller for those classic Model M's or the M-Star Mini M replacement controller because the 2021 Mini M is different than any other classic IBM keyboard. It's gotta have its own controller. But that's a video for another day. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for when I put the box pinks in this. It's gonna get a little louder, but I think, I think I've found my ultimate streaming keyboard, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm one of this level one, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the level one forums. If you like keyboard stuff and mods and stuff like that, you're gonna to wanna to get subscribed. I'll give you a little preview of stuff that we've got coming up because, well, I mean, if you're gonna make a career out of computing, you know, you fall in love with keyboards. Feels like a 1980s boombox, doesn't it? This is a beam spring keyboard. We got some content coming with that. There's another one behind me that sort of snuck into the set a little while ago. These are Model M's. They're a little bit newer than the Model F. I'm even working on my own custom controller. I'm not the first and I'm not the fifth or the sixth or even the tenth, but I love my controller. Welcome adventure. Because you are currently with the house. You are standing in an open field west of a white house with a bullet in front door. There is a small mailbox here. 
Open mailbox. Big <laughs> leaflet. Welcome to Zork. Zork is a game of adventure. Yes, that's right. You see, the original Model M had a speaker port. So why not be able to play a text-to-speech adventures like Zork through your keyboard controller? That seems perfectly reasonable, don't, don't you think? I'm Waddle, this is level one, I'm signing out. If you want to see more nonsense like that, definitely engage below. You are likely to be a dead by a crew. Or I'll be likely to be eaten by a Gru.